of game number three should be pretty different with Faker in the booth. Now, is this, oh, the Fizz ban, all right. Well, giving a nod to Crown's play. Even though he didn't get MVP, he also did snowball a lot to give time for his teammates to do as they wish. Uh, but see, why SKT's doing that is they still want to first pick Cassiopeia. So they're saying, well, now you have to ban it. You banned Alistair and Azir on the red side last game. Of course, SKT keeping that blue side for game three. And where are we going with this one? Siver, will they ban the Rek'Sai again? You have to assume that they will. There's no need to ban the LeBlanc this game. Alistair. Okay, well, Samsung, I mean, you got to have prepared for this ah, a okay. little bit. Okay, the LeBlanc ban again. You know, SKT's been doing this. Um, I mean, even at MSI a couple of times, even when Faker was in the booth, they will go ahead and ban the LeBlanc out. Just get rid of that factor because they want to sh really use Faker in other ways too. They don't want to rely on that crutch of LeBlanc. But see, now that the Azir and the Cassiopeia are both up, that prompts the first pick Rek'Sai. SKT couldn't deny the Rek'Sai in this game. And actually, I think banning the Gragas there is a big mistake. If yeah. Samsung can force SKT to pick between Rek'Sai and Cassiopeia, that's much more valuable to that, to Samsung because they want to take that Rek'Sai with that last pick. They can hide whether it's a top lane or a jungler until the last one. So I don't really like this draft. We'll see how it plays out from Samsung, but I think the mind games could have come in more had they taken out Azir instead of the Gragas. To be fair, while we haven't seen as much of Bengi's Gragas than other people's, Bengi was known in the solo queue ranks for a lot of his Gragas play, and whenever we did see it, he was really good. And generally, I think just a lot of teams saying Gragas, he just creates too many unpredictable fights, and you just don't want to deal with that. Also opens up the vein possibility, of course. So Samsung choosing for a little bit more of an obvious pick and ban, but following through with it, and goes ahead and takes the Corky away, and then the Nautilus. So two of the same picks from their composition last time. It's just the Gragas wasn't taken, so it does bump the Nautilus up, apparently, a little bit in terms of priority. SK Telecom, just take the Cassiopeia here. I don't see why you wouldn't. You're not worried about the Fizz anymore. That's why you banned the Fizz. You have the Cassiopeia option. Although, again, the Azir oh. could be the first victor we've seen yeah, since it has the been left open. patch change as well. But Faker again, competitively undefeated on Cassiopeia. Yeah, well, he needs to make sure he's undefeated in as many as possible. Gotta catch them all, Monty. <laughs> Well, yeah, but you have to you have to you have to catch them and then do it again. So the, the bounty gets higher and higher and higher as it goes on. You see, just waiting for the mid lane GP from Faker one day. Oh, and the Victor lock in. It's been a while since we've seen Victor in Korea due to all of his bugs. This is the first week Victor is available on 5.9. We were playing 5.9 last week without Victor. That's true, and this does make sense for the Fizz band too. Victor also pretty stationary. Fizz can jump onto him relatively quickly. Yeah, sure, Victor can try to counteract the damage. He has a shield and the eventual stun, but uh, just gonna pick that up without the huge threats there. Crown talking a lot. He seems to have some strong opinions on what to play or how to match this up. His Azir has been good, so maybe he goes for that. I'm not sure about that matchup. We really haven't had Victor and Azir in the meta at the same time. You'd think that Victor would still have a rough time against Azir and the poke that he brings forward. Yeah, it could be rough. Uh, the advantage that Victor has compared to some other people, just like Lulu, would be the fact that you can get a shield and you can also have your own long range poke. So I think especially given just the caliber of Faker, at most it'd probably even out in lane. And then, ooh, the Nidalee coming back out for Sam Song. And the Hecarim once again for Kuve. Maybe going for that pocket pick, and they will. Lots of pressure now. What are they doing in the mid lane? Because this tells me that they want to kill Nid again. Yeah. Well, There's no hard CC in the top side for a Hecarim kill. So I think they really have something weird here to kill the victor. I'm wondering if it's a rise. Okay. Well, it does have that targeted CC. Still on 5.9, though, so not as monstrous as we saw earlier this week from uh, the LCS. Leona being hovered over by Wolf. Alistair's gone. It is another hard initiate, which they are lacking a little bit here, but it 
they also have some options in the top lane. Yeah, they Mount Kai is open. They currently don't have a primary form of engage, and they have to rectify that either through their support or their top laner. Usually, Rek'Sai not so reliable, and they will yeah. just, I think Maokai Thresh will solve all your needs. I think that's really good, and especially with the Spears coming in, you want someone who can, worst case, just tank it out a little bit in the front line alongside Rek'Sai. So Maokai will be the pick, and with Maokai there, you don't need to take the risk with the Solar Flare on Leona. You can be a little bit more surefire with the Thresh. Oh, okay, could go for oh. the Cassiopeia themselves. That's disappointing. I was getting all excited, Monty. Yeah, but I, I just really prefer Nidalee jungle when you have a lot of hard CC in the lane, so you have better setup for the Spear and the Gap Closer, yeah. and you can maximize your damage in the early game. Certainly it can work, but it's not as reliable. Well, he's, being, he's hovering over it, he's getting ready. Looks like that should be the pick. 20 seconds left, but they're just mulling it over. Crown possibly just taking this extra time to consider which runes and masteries to take, of course. It is valuable time. I'm not sure Cassiopeia, uh, like you were saying, does have, has to get pretty close right there, and Victor is able to trade pretty effectively yeah. with his Q. It's gonna be a lock-in. Yeah, all right, well, Crown, at this point, he's deciding he just has to play a save, so Nidalee has to go somewhere else uh, if Nidalee wants some surefire ganks. Because like you mentioned, if you get close, Faker absolutely wins the trades. If not, you can still get poked out with the Death Ray. Okay, Samsung here. They've got a lot of early punch from their jungler. Can they put it to good use, though? There's not great kill pressure from their solo lane, so they're kind of looking to Nautilus at that stage, but against Ezreal might be a little bit tricky against that Lantern. Yeah. I'm really not seeing a lot of opportunities here for Nidalee in the early game. So as long as SKT plays pretty conservatively, they should be okay. And I really like the Thresh over the Leona because of that too. You can deny the Nidalee jumping yeah. in with the Flay. Just a lot more versatility in lane. So Samsung kind of picked themselves into a situation where the enemy knows what you have to do, you know what you have to do, but the options aren't really there. SKT, meanwhile, just a really sturdy composition. Uh, Faker, the only one who's in kind of danger of getting caught out, but again, no hard CC in that lane until level six. And of course, it's also Faker, so we will find out. Well, you also have to get on top of him as Nidalee, so he can just gravity field under his own yes. feet as well, which and presents a there. problem for <laughs> Eve continually doing damage. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna be a tough game to get through for Samsung. And maybe this is what we talked about earlier, Monty. Samsung does drop off as the series continues to run out of options, but we'll see how it turns out in game number three as we jump into the Rift. Cheers for SKT and Samsung. Today, after this one, we will have another fun matchup between LZIM and KT Roaster. See, KT Roaster continues their roller coaster climb upwards. Will they have a roller coaster climb downwards, however, is the <laughs> question. Fager's family here today, so at least they get one game of seeing him play. Yeah, you know, I, I wonder if Baker's relatives just come to the studio every game now to ensure that Baker gets at least one game play. They're like, really, Komar, are you still not going to put him in the booth? It's uh, the Faker insurance policy. Well, yeah. <laughs> would be pretty funny, but I'm sure they obviously, of course, support the team. I mean, Faker stayed with this team despite allegedly getting so many offers globally after last year. He stayed true and loyal to the team. This is a lot. I'm sure the team also offered him. Well, I'm sure some nice payment, but <laughs> but still, I mean, just a lot Maybe of people left Korea, man, and he decided to stick through and stick it is, with Coma. It is, it, yeah, it is true. But also, just in terms of SK Telecom's reputation as an esports team in this country, they they have been the premier team for many yes. many years now. For so across they, different they, titles, across different titles, and. They've been willing to put more money into this scene than anyone else, so it does make sense. And uh, there we go, looking at the win ranks, only 40% for Eve's Nidalee. Yeah, played a lot when he first entered the scene when Nidalee was kind of the hot stuff for everyone. And 
It's kind of hit or miss back then. Now it's become a pocket pick that he jumps back to. Indeed, so Marin just gonna take a couple wolves there, then head straight up into the lane. Kuve wants to go for the camp and then teleport back up top. He will be probably, see what he gets in terms of his items. Gets just some mana and health pots to round out his inventory and then TP's right back in. So Ignite again for Kuve. Not looking for the Cinder Hulk build. Yeah, just gonna have some more lane pressure, have some more kill for the late game when he sticks on to most likely Faker. Especially with that Ezreal there, Faker getting some nice trades in. And Crown, if you're not gonna win the damage trades, this is what you need to do. You need to at least stack up your passive. And that's the other danger, is that you can't initiate that first. You always have to wait for Faker to turn his back after he comes in for a trade. Yeah, he looks like Crown just wants to play this out in a little more farm-centric manner. Faker allowing the wave to push back to him, wants to put Crown in a bit of an uncomfortable situation. He does have the longer range poke with the Death Ray. Very interesting. Like Crown at level three, just trying to even out and help the mana, and he succeeds in doing so. And after having pushed it up a little bit, Crown is slightly ahead in experience, but Crown now in slight danger of farming. He's gonna get poked out by the Death Ray Faker taking some hits from the minions. So exciting. It is, the dynamics of Victor and Cassiopeia unfolding before our very eyes, Toba. <laughs> in their natural habitats of the mid lane. Well. Just gonna see Crown get a ward down. If you wanna take any risk, you know that Bengi most likely Aha. on the top side. And here we go, that bottom lane we talked about, it's kind of the only place where you have that surefire CC. And Bang gets a hit onto Wraith. But again, Bang's probably actually not the easier target here. It's probably gonna be Wolf, and Wolf dodges right behind the minion. Notice Eve doesn't even show, though. Yeah. Just goes right back to the tri brush. Bang and Wolf. Oh, wow. So patient by Eve. Eventually going back, though. See if he completes the recall here. Uh, Bang and Wolf are playing very cautiously after that initial push, so knowing that jungle path and seeing when he could actually be there to gank on the bottom side, they play cautiously when the caution is well deserved, even though it's a nice pathing path right there. Okay. Oh, and Baker gets into the duel and baits Crown in as Bengi comes up for the knockup. An easy first blood for Baker and Crown. I mean, he warded the top side himself and left himself completely vulnerable to the bottom side. He was playing on the bottom side when his ward was on the top side. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, a little bit awkward there. Eve here now as well. Bengi coming in for another knockup. Eve just pouncing out of the way. Yeah, well. That's gonna be a little tough a hook onto Wolf, but there we go. I mean, the play and now the counter hook from Wolf with the death sentence. Of course, Wraith has that shield. But you have the Arcane Shift for Ezreal, and you have the Flay for Wolf. You don't have a way to guarantee you go into the auto attack for Wraith to continue that CC chain. And now the boots for Faker as well, just making him even more efficient in his Q trades by running up faster and disengaging faster after he gets that auto attack. That can be very annoying to yep. deal with. Also, level one in his Hex Core, so he will have that extra bit of damage at the end of his Death Ray. Yeah, that's gonna be quite annoying right onto Crown, look at that. It's really difficult to deal with Victor at this stage, but Eve is going to try, Faker is... Oh, oh Faker got the stun, so he walks forward, he's just gonna flash right uh -oh. out of there, he was baiting it in, because look at this, Binky here again, and Crown gets hit by the Death Ray, but he is gonna dodge the damage from Binky, and Faker gets hit by the Spear, not the target Eve wanted. Man, if Binky had gotten hit, that would have been a kill for Eve. Uh, smart of SK Telecom to disengage. They didn't have vision in that brush. They don't want to just get kited endlessly by that speed from Cassiopeia and the spears from Eve. So they parry the gank and then head right back to farming. They did lose the flash onto Faker, however. Yeah, and now Ghost being used by Faker as he tries to run away. The hook not gonna hit, and look at the ultimate coming in from Faker. It's gonna be enough to take down Crown with the very last hit. Keeps it on Cassiopeia all throughout. Nice death sentence onto Wraith, and there's Ravniel. He gets stunned right at the end of it. Faker just doing damage from afar. Bengi picks up that one, and the game is slipping away from Samsung already at six, seven minutes. And this is why I had the question about the Cassiopeia, because we saw a lot of spears missing from Eve 
in these little skirmishes. There's just not a great setup for Nidalee. Crown gets all in right there. Wraith coming in from the bottom, but Wolf is already there. Look at this. Baker has the ghost, Lantern's back. And that Chaos Storm just barely enough. Now watch this. Oh, you don't get to see the spear from Eve miss. But the gravity field well placed, and that is 2-0-1 for Faker already. Kuve already used Onslaught of Shadows to start this duel. Marin low on mana, but Kuve, oh, dodges away from Bengi, but gets slowed by the Arcane Smash. Bengi looking for that knockup. Kuve just trying to draw as much time as possible and pressure Marin. I don't know where Kuve's going. Oh, he's waiting for Eve, but he's taking too much damage. Whoops. And now the game is completely deteriorating. There's just so many knockups that Eve has no control over Nidalee. And the 40% win rate continues to drop. <laughs> <laughs> well, Samsung. I do like the Eve pick, or the, uh, the Nidalee pick for Eve. Oh. Well, Bang just used the Trujar Barrage. He's low on mana. He has to flash out. The hook missing again from Ray, too. It's miss all your skill shots, Dave, for Samsung, apparently, in this third game. I mean, they were so spot on in game number two. And even in game number one, they played it well. But it looks like they are a little bit rushed right now in all their skill shots. And also in the mid lane, really a lot of credit to Faker, too. I mean, he used his ghost as soon as he saw Wraith earlier come in to dodge well, a dredge line. Hello. Hello, Crown. There's the Chaos Storm. And Wolf just going to take the Petrifying Gaze for his teammates. Faker doing enough damage his abilities from afar. Uh, with everybody still coming back up, that was a very low risk dive. And there's just no one Ooh. else to stop it from Samsung. So that snowball keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger right now in favor of SKT. And it's just, you can tell the difference in coordination between these two teams. Eve just a little bit out of sync with his lanes. Meanwhile, Wolf there for the instant lantern onto Faker. They've yeah. been responding a lot better to these all-ins. And Samsung also, you have to keep in mind, Faker had that immediate power boost when he got the, the hex core for his item. But yeah. tier, it's two tiers for Eve and Crown. <laughs> I was looking at that earlier. <laughs> we know Eve likes to go fast tier. He really, really yes. does. Because he likes to stack it up into a Seraph's Embrace as quickly as he possibly can. But that also means that maybe you can't 2v2 in this situation with two tier champions. And that's why I, w I thought that Cassiopeia really wouldn't be picked in the mid lane here because there's not, there's just not enough power in that 2v2 to make Faker hurt yeah. early. Yeah, you're missing both factors, the hard CC and the damage here with Cassiopeia in the laning phase. And Crown, I mean, sure, if you dodge the Death and then you go on for the engage while we look at this gank in top lane. Kuve does have Onslaught of Shadows. He's just gonna ult out of there and continue running away, hightailing off the top lane. He as loses we, a lot of minions, though, as a result. Yeah, Marin and Benki just making sure no one else shows up to pick it up either. And wow, the, Samsung just getting really shut down by SKT in game three. Samsung just can't hold it together for an entire best of three ever. <laughs> it's, it's disappointing because this team has flashes of brilliance, but they, when it comes to getting a victory in an entire series, they just can't make it work. Oh, well. Except against Spenu. <laughs> well, Spenu has a lot to learn, and they, they definitely seem to be learning here and there, but they're very new to all of this as a five-man roster. So, yeah, I mean, what can Crown do? He can just stack up his passive when Faker chooses to give him the option. 0-3-0 zero, zero for the Cassiopeia and 40 CS behind. For me, at the end of the season, Samsung is looking like a pretty clear-cut, like, seventh-place team. They, they're they definitely a tier above Anarchy, Spenu, and I am. But beyond that, they don't seem to have what it takes to really take out anybody higher. But here we go. Crown, just going to run away. Yeah, well, Eve was there cleaning the ward, so SKT choosing not to chase too far. But Bengi just saying, back off. This tower's mine. There's the chilling smite to make Again. sure that take the long way around. And bottom lane, Fury gets caught with the exhaust, and the death sentence doesn't play over the wall. They almost just get the kill right there. They don't want to commit over the wall, though. But again, look at how well SKT is denying minions. That was like two waves worth of experience that Crown had, couldn't touch. Baker's two levels up now. Yeah. So SKT just punishing to the maximum possible degree in this game. 
and Crown's suffering incredibly hard as a result. He's nearly at 50% CS. So Bengi doing absolutely the right thing, just zoning him out as much as possible. And that is just absolutely devastating. 5.5K gold advantage at 12 minutes and 20 seconds for SKT. Finger is just exacting vengeance for what happened to Easy Hoon in the last game. Yeah. Like, Crown, how do you like it when it happens to you, huh? <laughs> this is what happens when you do this. I get to come in. <laughs> Meanwhile, Kuve's tower gets taken. Just trying to put some damage down to Marn. Not going to matter too much. Marn does have the Ninja Tower. He's Fury dangerously low. Trishar Barrage is up. Heal comes in from Eve. But Nidalee's no Soraka, so Fury going to look to go back. Bang, not using his two shot barrage. Oh, there he goes, and not gonna find Fury. We'll find him here. Oh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> right through the, the stonework instead. <laughs> Ezreal destroying the Summoner's Rift. Well, SKT, I mean, yeah, the bottom lane is in no rush to necessarily push too far and hard. He's got that tier, he's happy just warming up. He's got a slight lead. No Trinity Force for Fury just yet. And of course, your mid lane is much stronger, so there's that threat against Samsung also. Baker now 3-0-1. Got that Merlinomicon right after the first upgrade on his Hexcore. So an augmented scary. Death Ray. So scary to have this many items this yeah. early in the game. Nearly 14 minutes, and he is just absolutely rolling. Uh, so 6-0, now already 6k ahead for SKT. It's starting to widen quite a bit with those tier ones going down in top and mid. And the Dragon is available for both teams, so we'll see if SKT sets some vision around it and maybe just immediately pressures that bottom lane with the power that Victor has right now. While Kuve just having a bit of a tough time stabilizing the top lane, but he'll hold on just fine. He just can't push forward and be as aggressive as Akram likes to be with that Ignite. SKT being super cautious about this Dragon. They don't even have a mid lane turret right now to stop them from shoving this wave, and they still won't quite go for it. Methodical play into the Dragon. Very cautious wards, even with this huge, huge advantage. Yeah, uh, they just wait until they make sure they got eyes on everyone in the last five seconds. It was a free dragon, they take it. Gold goes up slightly, but the power continues to grow by quite a bit. And now a pink ward there from Samsung to know that SKT sees that, but what can Samsung do to stop it? Wraith is gonna check it out, but nope, he decides it's too dangerous. As Faker shows up, he wants to pick up this blue. Bring it closer back to him as it resets, and Marin gets hit by a spear, but really not that much damage coming for Eve. Eve actually takes a huge chunk, but Onslaught of Shadows will secure the kill for Kuve. Meanwhile, we do have Bengi getting caught by the Dredge Line as Fury is left all alone. A nice death ray as he just walks out casually by Faker. Yeah, Faker is just absolutely taking over this game. You can see how much synergy he and Bengi have yeah. uh, in the laning phase here, as well as Wolf's roams were quite good. And the advantage to Bang playing Ezreal is he, lead, he needs very little babysitting, and that means that Thresh is a lot bigger of a force on the map. Which we definitely saw in those early ganks that got Faker so incredibly far ahead. Yeah, I mean, that really is the other big Hi, difference. Uh-oh, Marin comes up with home guards, and Eve is caught behind. Marin saw how much damage he did to this Nidalee before. The Sap clean, not gonna hit at the end. Oh, he can't get his ultimate popped onto Eve as Bengi shows up, the Death Charge goes in. Ah, <laughs> the Righteous Glory from Marin going forward to pick up the kill, and Faker shows up to get the last hit onto Kuve. Wraith has now been exhausted in Gravity Field, and Bengi picks up another kill. There's just a kill parade now for SKT. Well, remember that in the last game, Samsung was in a similar position. 10 to 1 kills very True. early in the game. But I don't think that SK Telecom is going to struggle as mightily <laughs> as Samsung did when it comes to closing. And that really is one of the bigger differences between these two teams right now, is converting an edge into a victory. Yeah, and as I was mentioning earlier, I mean, the big other difference between Easy and Faker, again, the synergy between Faker and Bengi, which is where it all starts, and then the rest of the team kind of centering around that. Izun and Tom not exactly at the same level in terms of teamwork, 
Both of them have a lot of merit, and Ezio himself is very consistent, but it does seem to kind of delve into just the backup plan of let's rely on Ezio. Whereas, I mean, they've won games handily earlier. I mean, Baker that is sieging a turret 1v3 right now. <laughs> Zoning him out with the gravity well, and they have to use a smite just to keep him from killing it. Yeah. They're very afraid. He has home guard boots too, so he's able just to push, 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 and get back into lane, surprise people for ganks. Yep, some more augments for his skills at the same time. Yeah, augments in Q as well. Yeah, so Faker. Just gonna, he takes a spear, but he's not too concerned. Marin not gonna hurt too much from that second spear javelin coming out from Italy. And Samsung, again, just doesn't have the answer to block this off. SKT also not prone to making as many mistakes as Samsung might have in game number two in order to secure this game. No, yeah. Wolf. Faker's solo push. pushing, too, is just ridiculous. Like, the fact that he's able to exert this much pressure by himself is pretty amazing. Going to go back and get a needlessly large rod. The amount of items he has under 20 minutes is... That's pretty insane. And this is really the difference between, sure, if you have Fizz, you don't have the wave clear, but then you have the escape. But you know what? If you don't have an escape, you just ward better, your teammates get vision for you, and then you can shove out the lanes really well with this Victor. Well, Kuve just, just trying to farm up, really. He doesn't want to get into a full-blown trade here, especially with more minions on Marin's side. It's a testament to how far Marin is ahead that he doesn't have- Whoa, oh, hello, Eve. And goodbye. And thanks for the red buff. Wow. Well, that, Kube, that, now that was a, scared. <laughs> so short-lived, short-lived Italy, but Italy has a Magus enchantment here, so pretty much zero tankiness. Yeah, and Baker has just a lot of AP. There is a dredge line from Wraith, but no one can follow up on that as Fury's taking quite a few hits from Bang. And Bang uses a true shot barrage. Not gonna get a kill. I don't think it even hit Fury, so. That's fine. Faker gets yet another turret. Faker does this. Like when he hasn't played that day or you know in a couple games, he comes back and then he makes sure he gets the most kills and the most objectives and the most. <laughs> he just gets the most everything. He's and then, taking so much solo gold too <laughs> from killing these towers all by himself. He's just banking up right now. I'd love to see what the gold differential between him and Crown is. It's probably like 2 or 3k already. Yeah, I, w I would imagine. So already 70 CS up, 6 kills and 2 assists. Taking local gold from the turrets all on his own. And Baker just so confident right now. And, and again, a lot of this also comes from the fact that his teammates back it up. They get the vision for him. They make sure they balance out the map pressure alongside him so that Baker can do this. You can't forget that eventually it is still a team game and as good as Faker might be, his team is just kind of flip-flopping around the jungle, then this won't be as effective. Wow, they're still pressing forward. 30 seconds of Zilda's Dragon. They have so much money in their pockets from tower destruction that they should probably go back and start thinking about setting up for another objective. And yeah, well, Faker just going to take the Krugs before he recalls. Just absolutely devouring SK, or the Samsung side of the map. And there you go. Oh, it was way more than I thought. It was wow. nearly 5,000 gold. 4,500 4, gold. Wow, that is, that's really monstrous. That is a beatdown. You have the loot in Zekko now on top of two augments, Umbrella and Nawakan, and home guards. 20 minutes. As 20 minutes. Yeah, nice blue buff transition over to Bang. Uh, poor Crown. He has an Abyssal Scepter. Good for you. Well, he had his time in the sun. Chobra was last game where he was torturing Easy Hoon, and now <laughs> he's just being absolutely bodied. Wow. Yeah, not much you can do. Blade of the Ring can finish for Bang, so you can pretty much solo this dragon. He's got that sustain, he's got the damage on objectives. And Bang also, I mean, this time around, that. Man Immune build working out just fine with Baker dominating this mid game for the entire team. They're gonna go for the 
inhibitor turret that they actually have a little bit of damage on or just right in the mid lane. Yeah, Van Gamping. Whoa, the flashback from Crown. He knows he needs to make something happen. The depth charge comes in, but no damage on the figure. Spear does land, but look at the death ray and the chaos storm. Crown's just gonna go down. He wanted just one more twin fangs. Oh wow, a nice lantern combo, and there's a shutdown coming for Kube. Baker following a little too eagerly as Wolf led the way for another kill. There's the poke coming back in. Can Fury escape the death sentence? He will for now, but Marin's here to help block this javelin so that SKT can take it and never deter it. Wow. Well, that was pretty bold by Wolf and Faker. Wolf actually lantern flashed to yeah. get Faker back <laughs> into that fight, which unfortunately ended up in him getting exploded by Kuve. <laughs> So, try to style a little bit. Yeah, I mean, Wolf thought his play would be enough CC for Faker to get another rotation down, maybe get that shield. Wasn't enough, but you know what? It's it's all right. I mean, you're 7 1 and 2. Uh, you now have that third augment on your skills, and Faker's still going to blow people up. Cool. I look forward to the gravity field true shot barrage combo now that that <laughs> one's upgraded. Yeah, I mean, so much synergy between the SKT skills and ultimates. And hey, look at that. Baron's just chilling out, so why don't we pay him a visit? Bang is going to go ahead and start it as he blinks over the wall, and that's going down very quickly for a 23-minute Baron. Yeah, they've taken pretty much every objective. No dragons given up, no turrets given up, no Baron's given up, just a couple of kills as Samsung faces the wrath of SKT post losing the second game of this best of three. Well, Samson's gonna have to take the Vesictus way and just be content with that one kill onto Faker. <laughs> like, All right, we got him, boys. Oh, look at this flank from Wraith, and it's not gonna amount to anything. In fact, he's just gonna get denied his escape. Marin just standing there, and Faker just wait, biding his time, looking to see when he can get a pentakill. He's gonna get one kill with the death ray. Trisha Barrage going right through for a field goal. Crown has to run away, Fury and Eve both at full health, but what can you do with the Baron buff here from SKT? Figure's damage is disgusting right now. That one death ray just <laughs> obliterated Wraith. Oh, and there's the loot that go popping. Oh, oh my, my goodness, the death ray and the Chaos Storm alone. 100 to zero on Eve at the very end. I don't even think the Chaos Storm hit him, did it? I, I think it was maybe just not. a Death Ray and the Luden's Echo. Yeah, it did seem to be right outside of range, and his health bar disappeared in one go. It turned all red at once. Crown getting Death Sentence, and then there's the slow. You'll, oh, he gets dropped back by the Gravity Field, and Faker just doing so much damage, hunting for kills alongside Bang. Bangy. Knocking up two people, double kill for Bang as Wraith escapes to his fountain. And that's going to be a quick one in favor of SKT. 16 to 2 kill score, and SKT locks up the match 2 to 1. Wow. Well, Faker ends a 24 minute game, 9 1 and 4, after having Bengi camp for him. And that's the advantage of having Faker on your team. You get a little bit of head, and he can absolutely take over multiple just solo tower pushes on Victor, no one able to do much of anything. Yeah, and we're looking at the replay in that last okay, one. Okay, it was Castor, it did hit him. Yeah, the initial hit hits. Uh, he also got the early Luden's Echo pop onto him before the Death Ray, uh, but Faker still 100 to zeroing Eve with no chance